You mean the acting grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius? Her constellation is Leo Minor, which represents strength and responsibility shouldered too young. Though the lioness has been separated from her pride for a long time, she grows from strength to strength, and the day will come when she is ready to return as its glorious leader. Albedo? Ah, I envy his ability to solely focus on his research without getting bogged down in mundane, worldly affairs. What a wonderful life. If that batty old lady hadn't had one too many screws loose, perhaps that's the life I'd be living by now myself. Ah, yes, Alice's daughter. She's in the custody of the Knights of Favonius, and Albedo looks after her too. She's blessed to have Trifolium as her constellation, which represents good luck. I'm slightly envious. <laughs> Although, if I'd been blessed with good luck, I suppose I never would have had the great honor of running into that old woman, would I? D. Luke Rognavinder. His constellation Noctua represents vigilance in the darkness of night. A lone guardian keeping watch, longing for the splendor of dawn, yet destined to solitude in the dark days preceding its arrival. Or wait, maybe Noct was the one tied to wealth. Kaya Albrick. He's a Patho Ocelus, destined for greatness and grandeur, and to hide ugly realities behind a layer of charm and elegance. He believes he has made a clean break with his past but one day fate will catch up with him. When it does, he will have a major decision to make. A Tempest Fugit. The constellation derives its name from the hourglass and stands for knowledge and time, or rather, the trade-off between them. As each grain of sand falls down, a moment of time, of life even, dies for good. To stop the unrelenting flow of sand, one would have to turn the hourglass on its side. But, once the sand comes to rest, it remains motionless forever. Hmm, maybe becomes lazy is more accurate than comes to rest in this case. Venti, the bard that sits around doing nothing all day? What's so interesting about him? Sure, I guess I can take a look. Huh, that's weird. The scry glass, it's... I can't see a thing. This wind... I can't... Open my eyes! No! My hat! Ah! My clothes! Stop! The wind's going to strip all my clothes off! Make it stop! Make it stop! All right, all right, I'll never do this again! The work of the astrologer is to show people what fate has in store for them, and that's exactly what I do. There will always be those, however, who are unable to accept what they're told. You want to chat? For fun? Oh, I don't usually have spare time for such activities, especially when I have so many columns left to write. Then again, since it's you, it might be worth it. <laughs> a change of pace once in a while isn't such a bad thing. Income. From astrology. <laughs> you can't use... things like Mora to determine the value of astrology. You need to understand, hydromancy is the one and only means of discerning people's true destiny in the whole of Tevat. No matter how much mora or gems you might have, the value of fate is quite simply incalculable. Perhaps not the smartest question you might have had for me? You want me to explain how astrology works? I'm not sure you'd understand even if I told you, but since you ask... The method I use is called hydromancy, the art of inferring fate from the illusory reflection of the stars on the water's surface. The inverted reflection in the water is an image of the heavens from within which the truth of our world can be observed. It is the one and only success story of that old lady's research endeavors. Mona Magistus, the astrologist. We came up with that name together, the old lady and me. She said it had a nice ring to it, but then she started calling me Meg for short, which is obviously unnecessary because clearly Mona is already suffice for a shorter name. No, you are not allowed to call me that. It's embarrassing. I knew I shouldn't have told you.
The golden rule all fortune tellers abide by is never offer advice. Only state the results of the divination. Otherwise, you risk your fate becoming tangled up with that of your subjects. But for you, I will make an exception to this rule. Because our fates have been intertwined from the beginning. Hmm, I don't know. Unless left with no other choice, astrologers do not foretell their own fate. The elders of my art warned against it, for it can turn fate in on itself, which is incredibly dangerous. Why do I write reports rather than using my divination to earn Mora? I would never use hydromancy for the sake of Mora, nor did I learn hydromancy for that purpose. As you are not from this world, I am unable to give you a prediction. All I can tell you is that your journey is far from over.